My dear respected brothers and sisters, all assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And welcome to this session on the last day taken from Surah Yasin, chapter 36, but verses 50 to 65. Uh, last week we were not able to complete because there was some technical issues. I did not know I was not on the internet, but inshallah we will try to do our best uh, now. So uh, this uh, discussion um, is taken from Surah Yasin, and the question we want to ask, are you ready for the hour of truth? And you know, there are some people who believe that there is no life after death, there is a denial of accountability. Uh, Muslims know that Allah promises a day when each individual will be recorded, rewarded uh, for their belief and whatever we have done in this world, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to reward us on that day. And at the same time, it takes accountability of <clears throat> what we have uh, done in our actions, then obviously they are not everything that we do is correct, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is merciful. So there are three parts to this uh, discussion. Um, in Surah Yasin 50 to 65, we are going to break it down into three sessions, three sections. Section one is about the blowing of the trumpet to the gathering, and this kind of um, in brief is captured in 50 to 54 verses 50 to 54. The second one is the people of Jannah. So it means that there's a lot of things that are happening in the uh, the day of judgment. And so um, you find that uh, between the trumpet and the gathering and the people of Jannah, there would be some information that uh, would be, you know, not discussed in this surah, but this discussed in other parts of Quran, along with the hadith. And the third part is the people of Jahannam, which will be from 59 to 65, and may Allah save us from the narrow Jahannam. So let's go right into the surah, and then we will break down uh, the thought process. A'udhu billahi minna shaitan rajim Fala yastati'una tawsiyata wa la ila ahlihim yirji'una nufikha fi suri fa idha hum min al-ajdaati ila rabbihim yansilun. Qalu ya waylana man ba'athana min marqadina. Hatha ma wa'ada al-Rahman wa sadaq al-Mursalun. In kanat illa sayhatan wahidatan fa idha hum jami'un ladayna muhadarun. Fal yawma la tuzlamu nafsun shay'an wa la tujizawna illa ma kuntum ta'malun. And a rough translation is, <clears throat> and they will not be able to give any instruction nor to their people uh, can they return. And this is at the first blowing of the trumpet, which comes to bring an end to everything. And then the trumpet will be blown, and at once from the grave to their Lord they will hasten. They will say, oh, woe to us, who has raised us up from our sleeping place? And the reply will be, this is what the most merciful has promised and the messengers told the truth. It will not be but one blast, and at once they will all be brought present before us. So today no soul will be wronged at all, and you will not be recompensed except of what you used to do. So here we are talking about an aspect of Iman in, this, in these verses here, that is part of Ilmul Ghaib, or the Iman Bil Ghaib, knowledge of the unseen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is telling us and there is no way we can know except by the fact that we believe in Allah, we believe in his prophet, we believe in the ghaib, whatever uh, is, has come to us. And we know that from the very beginning of our Quran that Allah says, <laughs> We believe in the ghaib and we perform. So it's belief and action. We believe in the ghaib and we perform salah and we spend out of what we have and they spend out of what we have provided for them. That is a comment of salat and ita is zakat. So here it is uh, the fundamental part of our 
iman, belief in the day of judgment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَأَنَّ سَعَةَ آتِيَةٌ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْعَثُ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ The hour is coming and without any doubt, and Allah will raise up all those who are in the graves. So this is a very important aspect of our, our iman, important aspect after belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, immediately the belief in the akhira comes. لَيْسَ الْبِرَّ أَن تُوَلُّ وُجُهَا كُنْ تِبَلَ الْمَشْرِكِ وَالْمَغْرِبِ وَلَكِنَّ الْبِرَّ مَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَالْمَلَائِكَةِ وَالْكِتَابِ وَالنَّبِيِّينَ وَعَاتَ الْمَالَ عَلَى خُبِّهِ And so righteousness is not that you turn your faces towards the east and the west, but true righteousness is that one who believes in Allah, the last day, the angels, the books, and the prophets. So here, immediately after believing Allah, who believes in Allah, and the last day. So um, it's very important to know where you come from, and where you're headed to. So your direction is clear, your sense of origin is clear, your sense of your end and your direction is clear. So on this day, we will have to face Allah the Almighty to be questioned and judged and recompensed how we live this life. This is the day when Allah's attributes of justice and mercy will be in full manifestation. And the Akhirah begins with death continues with the resurrection and judgment. So there are many names of the day of Qiyamah. And we the, the reason why all these names, because this day is so important, and it has so many different descriptions. So there is the uh, Yawm Al-Akhir, the last day. And these are all based on verses from the Quran. And you can see their citation there in the parenthesis. Yawmun Alim, a grievous day. Yawmun Asir, a difficult day. Yawmun Adim, a mighty day. Yawmun Ba'ath, the resurrection. Yawmun Deen, the recompense. Yawmun Fasl, the day of judgment. The Yawmun Fath, the day of decision. Yawmun Haq, the show reality. The day of show reality. Yawmun Hasra, the day of regret. Yawm al-Hisab, the day of account. Yawm al-Jam, the day of assembly. Yawm al-Khulud, the day of eternity. Yawm al-Khuruj, the day of emerging. Yawm al-Ma'loom. Yawm al-Ma'loom, a known day. Yawm al-Mashhud, a day of testimony. Yawm al-Maw'ud, a promised day. Yawm al-Qiyamah, the day of resurrection. Yawm al-Taghabun, the day of deprivation. Yawm al-Talaq, the day of meeting. Yawm al-Tanah, the day of calling. Al-Azifa, the approaching. Al-Akhira, the last, the last day. Al-Ghashiya, the overwhelming event. Al-Haqa, the truth or the certainty. Al-Qariya, the striking calamity. Al-Sa'a, the hour. Al-Sakha, the deafening noise. Al-Tama, the great disaster. Al-Waqi'a, the great event. So you find that there is, you know, the there are many ayat, and there are also some description in terms of a verse or part of a verse or phrase or so forth. Description of that day. So it, there are many, but just by way of mentioning some of them, uh, we have just mentioned uh, some of the names. But there are definitely more names on the day of Qiyamah. Uh, when we talk of the sequence of the Day of Judgment, because here it is, the ayah, the, these ayat, as I broke down into three sections, one is talking about the first and second blowing of the trumpet, and then just the gathering. And then there is, uh, not here in Surah Yasin, but other surahs tell you what goes on in between, and then Jannah and Jahannam. So there is no one ayah or hadith that will tell you that it begins here and this is what's going to happen and so forth. So over the passage of time, scholars try to piece together the sequence. So one can add a lot more based on an ayah or an authentic hadith and where to fit them. Where does this, all of it, this fit in? Because Surah Yasin 50 to 65 talks about three points. The, the beginning of the Qiyamah, and the Jannah and Jahannam. So there is a lot that goes on in between that are mentioned. Um, 
So the it, because of it being the most important day, their the descriptions are bountiful. So you know you will find that you can uh, map through the Quran and find so many verses with so many pieces of description of Qiyama that we can piece together. And so uh, if you look at the last two juz, you find that the description um, is very detailed, especially what goes on on that day. And remember, this is all knowledge of what scene that Allah has mentioned to us. So we believe in the realities. So what we're going to do now is to look at the happenings of the day of Qiyama. What really goes on? And again, this is a rough sequence. This is not a detailed sequence. You might find uh, you read an ayah and it's not listed in this sequence. But generally, what will happen is that the trumpet will be blown. Then there is resurrection. There is the gathering with the chaos of the Yom al Qiyamah. Then people will be standing on the sun and then the shade of Allah will be given to those uh, categories of people that are mentioned in several hadith. Then the, the actual gathering and shafa'ah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam will uh, give shafa'ah to, to his true uh, righteous uh, followers. And then after that, again, there, as I mentioned, there will be things in between could be back and forth but generally this would be what uh, you can piece together and find that after all of that then the distribution of the books the record of what we do and then after that we get our book then comes the hisab and this is the perhaps when we talk of kayama this part here is no doubt the the moment when we are going to be given an account or reckon uh for what we have done so this standing for this reckoning or accountability with allah then after that the deeds are going to be put on the scale because allah we hope and pray he forgives us for what we do so that bad deeds will be taken away our deeds will what remains will become heavy it's put on the state scale and then after that everybody comes to see the hellfire because you have to cross over the hellfire and to go to Jannah, and for those who can't make it, they will fall into the fire of hell. And then you have the Sirat. Then, when people enter Jannah, there's a second bridge called the Kantara. And the Kantara is basically uh, whatever you have for a believer in terms of envy, malice, grudges, and so forth, it will be all removed. And then you will enter the the full Jannah. So this is still in Jannah. The second bridge is in Jannah, but you will be removed from any, um, you know, grudges or evil or envy. Sometimes you still, you know, you're in Islamic work and you, you, you're good brothers or good sisters, but something about a brother or sister you don't like, and so all of that will be removed at that point. And then there's Jannah and Jahannam. So um, some of these things are definitely. Um, uh, you know, we uh, look at, uh, sorry, my screen went off. Yeah. Yeah. So definitely you find that, uh, uh, yeah, I think I'm having like, yes, issue here. Good. So, yeah. So you find that all of these things are, uh, basically a movement from one uh, stage to another. So let's begin as the ayah is telling us about the blowing of the trumpet. And how many blowings are there? The Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama, the, uh, the vast majority believe that there are two blowing of the trumpet. The first blowing of the trumpet is uh, to mark the end of this world. And so you will find that, as we mentioned in the last two judges, a lot of details about that, what will happen and how the skies will burst open, the stars will fall down and scatter, and seas will uh, overflow and so forth. The second trumpet is a trumpet for resurrection. And so this is a trumpet for uh, resurrection and what happens um, uh, on the day of judgment that is now 
the moment when everybody will be gathered, as Allah says, wa nufiqa fi suri, fa sa'ita man fi samawati wa man fi al-ardi, illa man shah Allah, summa nufiqa fihi ukhra fa idha hum qiyamu yanzurun. That the trumpets will be blown, and whoever is in the heaven and the earth will fall dead, except whom Allah wills, then it will be blown again, and at once they will be standing looking up, okay, and are looking on. So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us about the first trumpet that brings the end of this world and everything turns into uh, uh, nothing basically. And then the second blowing of the trumpet will happen and then everything will come back to resurrection. Then Allah Azza wa Jal will then say with the voice that will be heard throughout the heavens and the earth. Limanil bulk al yawm. This is a hadith based on, in Sahih Bukhari that the Prophet said Allah will say, Limanil mulk al yawm, to whom belong the ownership and sovereignty now. And no answer will come. And he himself will answer that after three times he will say, then he will say, Lillahi al-wahid al-qahar, limanil mulk al yawm, lillahi al-wahid al-qahar. Then after this period, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send or what he will cause to send rain that will look like dew, you know, like a thick fog. And then the dead bodies will grow like how vegetations grow. So this is um, a description here that when we will be resurrected, that there will be, it will be like how the, the plants grow, but this time, their dew drop, it will come like dew drops or very thick, um, you know, substance. And how long between the two trumpet, trumpet, first trumpet and the second trumpet, is again related in Hadith of Abu Huraira that the Prophet Sallallahu said, between the two sounds of the trumpet, there will be 40. So somebody asked Abu Huraira 40 days and he did not say anything. Then they asked 40 months, again he refused to reply. He, they asked 40 years, again he refused to reply. Then he added, then after this period, Allah will send water from the sky and the dead bodies will grow like vegetation grow. There is nothing of the human body that does not decay except one bone, and that is the little bone at the end of the caucus, which, uh, of which the human body will be recreated on the day of judgment. And that is the tail end. Your, the end of the tailbone, that's your backbone that comes down. Uh, the, the last one is called the caucus. Uh, and it's a bone that is said not to be destroyed and people will be rise up from that. Then the resurrection. As Allah says, وَأَنَّ سَعَةَ آتِيَةٌ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهَا وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ يَبْعَثُ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ That uh, the hour is coming and no doubt about it and Allah will resurrect those of the grave. Indeed, on the day of resurrection, you will be uh, resurrected. Do these people not think that they shall be raised again for a mighty day, a day on which men shall stand before their Lord of all the words? Or as the ayah, uh, begins and uh, Surah uh, Yasin that we are looking at when Nufi Khafi Suri for Ida Hum Minal Ajidathi Ila Rabbihim Yan Silun and the trumpet will be blown. That is the second blowing. And behold, from the graves they will come out quickly to their Lord. How people will come out on that day when they will be running out of their graves? Prophet Sallallahu again described in the Kum Mahshuruna Hufatun Uratun Urla. Ibrahim. So in a hadith, the Prophet said, You people will be gathered before Allah on the day of resurrection, barefooted, naked, and uncircumcised. And then he recited the verse uh, translated as when we begin the first creation, we shall repeat it. It's a promise we have undertaken, and truly we shall do it. And then the Prophet ﷺ added, then the first man will be dressed on the day of Qiyamah will be Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam. Um, Allah gives the similitude of the, and it is he who sends the winners good tidings before his mercy until when they have carried a heavy rain cloud, 
we drive them to a dead land and then we send down rain therein and bring forth thereby of all the fruits. Thus we will bring forth the dead. Perhaps you may be reminded what a similitude that we see a, a desert land, a dry land, nothing bears and then Allah sends the rain and vegetation comes up. So just like that, he's saying that just like that, your resurrection will come. So don't deny it. Um, and then where the plane would be, the Prophet said, Yushar al-Nasu yawm al-Qiyamati ala ard bayda afra qursati naqi. The people will be gathered on the day of judgment on a reddish white land, like a pure loaf of bread made of white, white flour. So it's like a plain flat bread, no signposts, nothing, just like all of us know what the, a flat bread looks like, but without anything on, on, on top of it, not even toasted. So it will be like that, just flat land. Laysa fiha ma'alamun li'ahadin. There will be no landmarks for anybody to make use of. This is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Then there will be a chaos. And Aisha radiallahu anha qala qala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tuhsharuna hufatun uratun ghurlan qalat Aisha faqultu ya rasulallah arrijalu wa nisawu yanzuru ba'dhum ila ba'd faqala al-amru ashaddu min an yahimuhum dhak. This is hadith reported by Imam Bukhari. Allah's Prophet ﷺ said, the people will be gathered barefooted, naked, and uncircumcised. And so Aisha said, I asked, O oh Allah's Apostle, will men and women look at each other? He said the situation will be too hard for them to pay any attention to that. So what we understand of qiyamah, feelings, and emotions, and so forth, while some of it will be like what we experience of sadness and joy and and feeling disappointed and so forth they will be there but this carnal desires the worldly desires they are not going to be there and they are different because you know uh, the chemistry the physics that goes on on that day it's a different reality so those who reject allah's message shall be raised up blind this is a very sad situation of those who, and they will ask Allah. Qala Rabbi lima hashartani ama wa qad kuntu basira. Qala kathalika atatka ayatuna fanasitaha wa kathalika al-yawma tunsa. And they will say, such a person will say, Oh my Lord, why have you raised me blind while I had sight before? That is, I could have seen in this world. Allah will say, this is how it is. Our signs have come to you, but you disregarded them, and thus you will this day be disregarded or forgotten. So there is a chaos where everybody is running and running away. This is where when we read, Everybody is running from one another. This is the moment when, uh, you know, you're just coming out, you're in the gathering, this chaos takes place. Um, and then Jahannam is going to be brought now. وَجِيَ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ بِجَهَنَّمْ يَوْمَ إِذِنْ يَتَذَكَّرُ الْإِنسَانُ وَأَنَّ لَهُ ذِكْرَى And hell will be brought near that day. On that day will man remember, but how will his remembrance avail him? Abdullah ibn Masood radiallahu an, uh, he said that the Prophet sallallahu said, hell will be brought forth on that day by the means of 70,000 ropes. And each rope will be pulled by 70,000 angels. So we're talking about 4.9 billion angels are pulling Jahannam in the view of everybody. And we'll come back to that um, towards the end of our discussion. And the other thing what happens as hell is being pulled and the hellfire, I mean, this is a reality that uh, fire in this world is different. But fire in the hereafter, the hellfire, uh, Allah describes when the hellfire sees them, that is, sees the mujrimin, the those who reject Allah from a distant place, they will hear the fury and the roaring of this. It will roar even more when it begins to see them. So this is not a a moment anybody wants to, you know, be. Um, on the side where the fire will see them and roar, but rather 
you know that is why qiyama itself even for believers it is it is a difficult day till we pass all of this then the the goodness will come so these this is what we will be discussing here the next steps some other time now what are those steps like standing under this the the, the sun and the shade that allah will give the actual gathering and the shafa of the prophet sallam, the distribution of the book and the people of right hand how they will be and the people of left hand how they will be then the reckoning then the putting on the scale um and then the bringing of the fire. So we will talk about these uh, uh, last few parts here. And definitely Jannah and Jahannam will be the third and second and third part of this discussion. So if we go back to the verse, just bearing in mind all of these things that we just heard. Now, if we go back to the verse of Surah Yasin, um, so putting all that we have heard and when and they will not be able to give any instruction that's when the first trumpet is blown nor to their people can they return that's it At whatever moment whatever state they're in that's the end of it and the trumpet will be blown and at once from the graves to their lord they will hasten and they will say oh woe to us who has raised us up from our sleeping place the reply will be this is what the most merciful has promised and the messengers told the truth it will not be but one blast and at once they will all brought present before us so today no soul will be wronged at all and you will not be recompensed except for what you used to do so now we come to part two of this discussion which goes from uh, uh 60 to um uh, 58 to 55 to 58 in ashab al jannati al yawma fi shughulin fakihun hum wa azwajuhum fi dhilalin ala al araiki muttaqiun lahum fiha fakihatun wa lahum ma yad'un salamun qawlan mir rabbir rahim indeed the companions of paradise that day will be amused in joyful occupation they and their spouses in shade reclining on adorned couches for them therein is fruit and for them is whatever they request or wish peace a word from a merciful lord i mean what a beautiful uh description here of of the joy here you you read about the joy and the pleasure and peace and harmony and and you get whatever you request you get whatever you want uh, this is the description of of jenna and um So everybody now, before you go to Jannah, everybody has to come to this fire, to cross over this fire. And Allah tells us in Surah Maryam, وَإِن مِّنْكُمْ إِلَّا وَارِدُهَا كَانَ عَلَىٰ رَبِّكَ حَتْمًا مَغْضِيًّا ثُمَّ نُنَجِّ الَّذِينَ اتَّقَوْ وَنَذَرُ الظَّالِمِينَ فِيهَا جِثِيًّا And there is none of you except he will come to it. That is, come to the fire of hell. So one of the processes that we have that people, everybody will see. This is what the fire of hell is. This is upon your Lord and inevitable, inevitability decreed. So it's a necessary, something that's already decreed. And then we will save those who feared Allah, who have taqwa, who worship Allah, and leave the wrongdoers within it on their knees. So this is the humiliation that those who reject Allah uh, will happen for them on the day of judgment and then there's this bridge that everybody has to cross over on a very thin line that is thinner than the hair the sharper than the sword and it is over the hellfire that has hooks big hooks and those who do evil this hook will pull them in um, you know we can only just 
put a, a little picture of a fire and, and, and something over it, but it is way more intense than what we can even imagine. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, uh, he tells us, وَأُزْلِفَتِ الْجَنَّةُ لِلْمُتَّقِينَ غَيْرَ بَعِيدٌ هَذَا مَا تُعَدُونَ لِكُلِّ أَوَّابٍ حَفِيدٌ مَنْ خَشْيَ الرَّحْمَانَ بِالْغَيْبِ وَجَاءَ بِقَلْبٍ مُنِيبٍ أُدْخُلُوهَا بِالسَّلَامِ ذَلِكَ يَوْمُ الْخُلُودِ لَهُمْ مَا يَشَاءُونَ فِيهَا وَلَدَيْنَا مَزِيدٌ So, and paradise will be brought near to the righteous, not too very far. And it will, say, it will be said, this is what you were promised for every returner to Allah and keeper of his covenant. Who feared the most merciful unseen and came with a heart returning in repentance. Enter it in peace. This is the day of eternity. They will have whatever they wish they're in and with us is more. This is the greatest bounty of Qiyamah to see Allah SWT. That is the more. And more means the ziyada is is seeing Allah on the Day of Judgment. May Allah make us all to see Him on the Day of Judgment in Jannah of Firdaus. Then the third part of the uh, discussion is verses 59 to 65, which describes uh, Jahannam. Again, this is a very brief discussion uh, description, but it's very uh, powerful. Wantazul yawma ayyuhal mujrimun. Alam ahad ilaykum ya bani adama an la ta'abudu shaytan innahu lakum adu wa mubin wa ni'abudu ni hadha siratu mustaqim wa laqad adhalla minkum jibillan kathiran afalam takunu taqilun hadihi jahannamu allati kuntum tu'adun islaw hal yawma bima kuntum takfurun al yawma nakhtimu ala afwahihim wa tukallimuna aydihim wa tashhadu arjuluhum bima kanu yaksibun so this description, Allah calls them criminal, those who uh, reject him. Then he will say, but stand apart today, you criminals. Did I not enjoin upon you, O children of Adam, that you should not worship Satan? For indeed, he is to you a clear enemy and that you worship only me. This is a straight path. And he has already led astray from among you much of the creation. So did you not use your reason? This is the hellfire which you were promised. Enter, burn therein today for what you used to deny. That day we will seal their mouths and their hands will speak to us and their feet will testify of what they used to do. So here it is, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us that this body has a DNA and this DNA will speak out. The hands will speak out, the feet will speak out. And all of our body will testify because all of our body goes through this process that we are going through in this life. And so what happens with Shaitan on that day when he is the one that people followed and followed his whispering, Shaitan will come and say, وَقَالَ شَيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعَدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ وَمَا كَانَ لِي عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي فَلَا تَلُومُونِي وَلُومُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ مَا أَنَا بِمُسْرِخِكُمْ وَمَا أَنْتُمْ بِمُسْرِخِي إِنِّي كَفَرْتُ بِمَا أَشْرَكْتُمُونِ مِنْ قَبْلِ إِنَّ الظَّالِمِينَ لَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ And Satan will say when the matter has been concluded, indeed, Allah has promised you the promise of truth. And I promised you, but I betrayed you. But I have no authority over you except that I invited you and you responded to me. So don't blame me. Blame yourself. I cannot be called to your aid, nor can you be called to my aid. Indeed, I deny your association with me, with Allah. Indeed, for the wrongdoers is a painful punishment. So here, Shaitan will uh, say that I have nothing to do with you, and that's it. You know, you are left all on your, on your own. And these are the descriptions that Allah SWT has given. There's a lot, a lot, a lot of description of Jannah and Jahannam. Um, in Al-Quran and this is only some of the highlights. May Allah grant us tawfiq, give us Jannah to fear doubts and save us all from the fire of hell. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. So we will uh, have a few questions because I think uh, there might be some questions that uh, you know you might want to get answered. So um, I will have a few minutes to do that inshallah. And jazakallah khair. Yes. Jazakallah khair. 
So Barzakh is actually the third phase of existence. Our first phase of existence is from the before we were born. So coming into the wombs of our mother, the we up until that point is the first stage. The second stage is this life in which we are in. The third third stage is a, is the barzakh, and barzakh is actually a waiting period between death and qiyamah. So everybody who has died, you call that in a state of barzakh, and barzakh you can re get some of the reward of jannah uh, if you do good, and we hope for that. Or people punishment can begin in the barzakh for those who reject Allah subhanahu wa taala, and this is the aqidah uh, of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'a that in the state of barzakh you can have some reward from Allah, um, or you can have some punishment um, in that state of barzakh till the day of Qiyamah when that will be the fourth and final stage of our existence. Yes, good question. And what happens is that uh, we always need to remind one another because the entertainment uh, that is surrounding us takes us away from the remembrance of Allah and the last day. And just go into shahawat, our desires of uh, dealing with uh, what all the things I want to do and this uh, movie and this sports and this politics and this life and this family and this, you know, enjoyment and eating and drinking and party. And so even uh, sometimes, unfortunately, people can still pray their prayers, but these things come to affect them to the point where you do them, but the connection of the Akhirah is not visible in front of you. So uh, we need to remind, first of all, we need to remind each other. Secondly, it is upon each one of us when we read the Quran, and especially the last two juz, I would really uh, strongly advise even the translation, just read what this day of judgment is. And in our niya, when we do our actions, you see the Prophet ﷺ tells us, al qayyisu mandana nafsahu wa amila lima ba'd al mawt that the wise man, so we have to be wise, the wise man, wise woman, we have to be wise as believers because Prophet sometimes the wise man is a person who does the deeds that benefit him after he dies. So why am I doing? So we need to question ourselves. Why am I doing this thing? What do I want with my salah that I pay, pray five times a day? What do I want with the time I go for why Islam or, or gain peace or dawah or, or some ikna event or some dawah oriented thing? Why am I doing these things? If it is just, uh, you know, I'm in ikna, I have to do it or everybody is doing it, so I have to do it. This is weak. This is weak. But what I... What when we start to think, is this what I'm going to do? Going to please Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? Is this going to be something that is going to be reckoned for me on in my book on the day of Qiyamah? And I would also like to say to you, brothers and sisters out there, when somebody gives a talk on Islam, go up and tell that person, or you know that brother, that sister, whoever it is, may Allah write this in your book of good deeds. Make a dua for them and they will make back a dua for you. You know, sometimes we just listen to a lecture and we walk off. This is this is not, you know, and like we don't think. All you think, oh, he's a good speaker. He's a powerful speaker. Forget about him. On the day of Qiyamah, he will have to stand powerful or no powerful. We all have to stand in front of this all powerful. So I would say we have to start to develop vocabulary and ways of how to start remind each other. And I know that, you know, I, I do dars at our masjid here in, in Charlotte. And mashallah, every, when you finish, you know, this old brother comes and says, you know, may Allah make this in your mizdan uh, hasanatik, in your scale of good deeds. And like, I feel so like, you know, like nothing else more makes me so happy than when somebody is asking that Allah will make whatever you would you share with us to be on the scale of your good deeds. As opposed to, wow, you're such a good speaker. You're such a, a powerful speaker. I don't care about being powerful speaker. 
what I care about is that whatever I do, and so each one of us have to develop this, this vocabulary, that instead of praising this person, make a dua for that moment when the book will be handed out and it will be in his scale of duty. Yes, well, obviously the, the, the names of the Day of Judgment are plenty and they come with a description, okay? These names, they come with a description. So, Yomul Mashhud, the Day of Testimony. And when we have to testify of the things that we used to do. Um, the Day of Qiyamah, the Day of Standing, and that standing is going to be long. You know, in one uh, uh, ayah, it talks about a thousand years, in another ayah, it talks about 50,000 years. For the believer, that standing will be much shorter. And the Prophet Sallallahu talks in a hadith like, like the, 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 what is between Maghrib, what is between Asr and, and Maghrib, basically, as how short it will be for the believer. So that's a day of, um, uh, you know, when you have to stand uh, in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yomul Hisab, Yomul Jam. Jam means that you're gathering, you're being gathered together now, all from the beginning to the end. This is where everybody's so. Imagine you're going to be there with your father, father grandfather, great grandfather, your generation, generation, the prophets, the the messengers, the you know all of them, all the Sahaba up until Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So this is the day of gathering from the first to the last. Nobody's going to be left out from that gathering. Um, Yawmul Khulud. Uh, this is the day when the the uh, eternity, the day of eternity. My dear brothers and sisters, we really don't know what eternity means. It's, it really does not dawn upon us to know what eternity means. But sometimes if you really come to think about it, you really would make your life in this world very, very productive. Because if this short life is going to bring me eternal happiness, then why would I waste it uh, behind things that bring no value when I stand to get the reward of a day that is eternal. So I think all of these day, all of these names is they kind of bring a message to us. And that message is that either it's a day of, you know, all of these are are big descriptions, day of decision, reality, regret, account, assembly, eternity, emergence, a known day. You know, this is this is a Qiyama, Yomul Qiyama or, or the Day of Judgment is not a simple day. And I think Muslims should start to get a lot more serious, a lot more serious about thinking, even if every day you spend five minutes thinking of one of these names of Qiyama. And inshallah, I will send this uh, uh, to you. So if every day you take one of this verse, read what comes before, read what Allah SWT is talking about, read some English translation of whether Ibn Kathir or Tafheem or Quran, or, and try to, to strengthen your resolve and your, your belief and your certainty of the day of Qiyamah. Yes, so um, it is all things that we do, and the things that we do, uh, the niyyah on that day will be, will be uh, made known. So in the hadith of Sahih Muslim, Allah SWT talks about uh, people that will be brought up first will be a shaheed person who we say oh he's a martyr this person is a shaheed that person is a shaheed but when Allah he stands before Allah it's not the external now that will be judged it will be the internal and so that person will say oh Allah I die fighting in your cause Allah say you lie you die because you want people to say you're a brave person and they have said so and he will be dragged on his face into the fire of hell why because this is our action. This is not. This is this is our um, reason for doing that action for show. And so, one of the things that we, when we do our action, we really have to cleanse it. As Ali radiallahu an said, whenever we do an action, we always used to have the purpose for which it is done. That is the right niya. While we are doing it, we always make sure we do it correctly according to what Allah wants and according to what Prophet Sallallahu showed us. And when we finish this action, we used to make sure that we do not do it for show and we keep it as 
you know, as as secret or or uh, you know, not not blab about it or talk about it. So if we start developing that the day of judgment is the day when all of these deeds will be brought forward, then our niya is very important. How we do it is important, and what we do after it is important. It can't just be we are standing up there and telling people, I am so, and I am so, and I am so. You're nothing. We are nothing. All these speeches that people give is nothing if it does not have the right intention with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that will be the second character, an alim and a qari of Quran. Allah will ask, what did you do with your time? Oh Allah, I became an alim, I became a qari of the Quran. Allah said, you lied. You, you did that because you want people to talk good about you. And so I think this is a very deep training. We have to train ourselves. And one of these other times, uh, Brother Farhan and the you brothers and sisters, I think a topic that will be very useful is the topic of ikhlas. How to make ikhlas in your amal? Because that's a whole big discussion that will really bring us to the day of judgment. So ikhlas is a very, very important discussion that we need to have. And even if we know it, if every day somebody can remind us in for half an hour in the morning before we start our day of ikhlas, it will be good. No person will be will be uh, uh, left without their judgment given to them. So if you give, uh, if you injure someone, if you take away someone's wealth, if you blaspheme someone, slander, Allah will take out that portion of your good deeds and give to that person. And so that exchange will take place. After that, after that judgment is done, then comes the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He will forgive. He can forgive all of it. Okay, you now that your balance sheet is here in front of me, I forgive you for what you have done because you did this, you did this, you did this. But you still have to pay for that crime that you have done to the other bro Muslim brother, for example. So you will have to do your accountability and then the mercy of Allah. And that's what we are hoping for. The mercy of Allah at that point to forgive all of our sins. So Allah can forgive all of the sins that we have done or he can forgive portions of that sin. And that portion can be from one to, to 100. He can forgive uh, or one to 99. He can forgive that or forgive the entire thing. Or if it is his wisdom that you have to pay for some of your crime, uh, you, that's what it is. And so that's why we beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And one of the dua in sujood is, Allahumma hasibni hisaba yasira. Oh Allah, make this accountability in front of you, an easy accountability. Allahumma hasibni hisaba yasira. So we know of the accountability. We know we have to pay for our sins, whether it's wrong against Allah, wrong against other human being, wrong against the creation of Allah. And at the same time, we hope for the mercy from Allah that whatever remains of us, of the good deeds, after people get their portion from what we have done wrong to them, that we hope that Allah will have mercy on us. And by the way, nobody enters Jannah except by the mercy of Allah. This is a hadith. Prophet Sallallahu told his companion, nobody enters Jannah except by the mercy of Allah. So the Prophet, they asked the Prophet Sallallahu even you, Ya Rasulullah, he said, even I, I cannot go to Jannah except by the mercy of Allah. So this mercy is just beyond just forgiving and, 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 and wiping away our sins. It is beyond that, that Allah's Rahmah is what takes us, not just our action, but his mercy is what takes us from uh, where we are into genital fair doubts. So that that uh, returning that goes back, anaba yunibo like raja yarjao, it goes back to Allah subhanahu wa taala. So this is a heart that goes to Allah constantly, and you know the rough translation is that a heart returning in repentance. So that's where tauba is, you know you go back with a returning heart to Allah, a heart that seeks repentance and seeks Allah's forgiveness, Allah's um, mercy, you know, whatever you do, uh, you may not have done it the right way, you beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is a qalbun munib that constantly go back. So one of the ways of developing that is to make ourselves from our tongue and our heart 
return back to Allah with our sins and beg Him for forgiveness. 